What is up you guys, it is your boy the Powerful Swordsman here, aka the Bankai to the motherfucking Tencho. Welcome to Sunrun Discussions and today we're going to be talking about Haruka's backstory. Now, Haruka, Haruka was the very first super sadist. And the reason why I'm saying that, the reason why I'm saying she's the very first super sadist is because y'all thought Ryobi was a sadist. Ryobi is a sadist too, but Haruka, let's not forget that Haruka is the original sadist because she came first way before Ryobi was introduced in Senron, in the Senron Kagura franchise. So before y'all say anything and say, oh, Ryobi's the sadist, no. Haruka is the original master first sadist. Anyway, let's get started with her backstory. Haruka, the thing with Haruka is that there is a reason why she'd always treat those she treat those she meets as her doll and you know and this is the main reason of why Haruka had treated Hibari this way at the very start when they first fought because her backstory may have a little bit of something to do with this and the way her mother was treating her but during Haruka's backstory as a little girl her mother would always buy her whatever she want her mother would always keep her inside the house and not even let her leave at once she kept her on pro probation and all that stuff so basically what happened was what, what happened with Haruka's mother, and this is the creepy thing about Haruka's mother, and I don't think any parents in real life act like this, but her mother treated Haruka as a doll, and as I said before, this is the main reason, this is what leads to Haruka being the way she is, not the super sadist, but different ways as well, I mean, I, I mean, it might have some part of her being the super sadist to, to do with, but her... The way she treats Hibari when she first met Hibari, if you played the Senran Kagura Burst and all that stuff, or Burst Renewal, whichever, you know that Haruka treats Hibari as her toy. She says, you're, you're my toy and all that stuff, you must do my bidding and all that stuff, you're my toy. Which means, well, in other words, she would use it as friend, but the whole toy thing is basically... It's basically a childhood phase, you know, a childhood phase that she went through when her mother treated her like a toy and kept her in the house all the time. She didn't treat her as a human being, and that's basically what led to Haruka being the way she is today. But, you know, this was this was before, like, like the way Haruka is being the way she is towards Hibari and them, this was before she got to know Hibari more and all that stuff, before Hibari um, went to Heavy Joe after... You know after being you know after what after what happened after her being the reason that the super secret ninja scroll was lost he buddy had went to heavy joy and all that stuff and haruka began to feel more you know comfortable with he buddy and all that stuff to the point where she doesn't really need to be treating people like dolls anymore and stuff so he buddy you could say made her see a light and all that stuff but let's continue first <clears throat> What happened later on with Haruka is it's not just her mother that was creepy and all this and all that stuff, but it was also her father. Her father, her father wasn't really creepy or anything, but her father is a doctor and he is also a cheater. You could say the man was having affairs a lot of times, and I honestly think that her good for nothing father is what led to her mother being the creepy woman that she is now. Because her mother, I believe, was probably obsessed with dolls, and that's why she treated Haruka as a doll as well. She she didn't treat her own daughter as a human being, but as a mere doll. But she got tired of it. Haruka got tired of everything that went on with her life like everything that went on with her past and everything like that she just got tired of it and she decided to burn the whole house down she decided to burn the whole house down until rin came but we call her susane sensei susane sensei rin whichever but that was when rin came and she stopped haruka from doing something she might regret i don't think she'd regret it though and this backstory is also shown in the senran kagura um anime um <clears throat> anime adaptation senran kagura ninja flash season one so you can watch it there um but yeah this is also obviously explained in the game too but um it's better to see it in the anime because you get to see exactly like you get to see it exactly show but what happened after that after rin stopped haruka later on she enrolled in heavy joe rin brought haruka to heavy joe where she teached haruka ninja puppetry and Hibari, Hibari, like, the thing about Hibari is that, you know, she, she has a secret puppetry, you know, the Kagon and all that stuff, the secret puppet eye, and she can't really control it and all that stuff, and she doesn't really like it, but Haruka, Haruka, if you think about it, Haruka does ninja puppetry as well, um, and honestly, I feel like she could probably teach Hibari how to control the, um, Kagon one day, it, cause Haruka's a master with ninja puppetry, as you can see, but, um, because that's her style, pup, ninja puppetry. But what happens after that is, after Haruka learns ninja puppetry from Rin, you get this. 
she later on used that ninja puppetry she later on used that puppetry style to make her father admit to his crimes and what he did all the affairs and all that stuff she she used ninja puppetry and forced it on her father to make him admit to his crimes and honestly i believe the father deserved that too but whatever happened whatever happened to the mother though i don't know what happened to the mother after that um I don't really know. I guess I assume she died from depression or something like that. I don't know. That's probably my guess, but they don't really talk about what happens after these. They don't really talk about what happens to certain characters' loved ones in Samurai Kaga. For certain characters, not all. But um, that's pretty much it for her backstory. She uses the ninja puppetry to force her father to admit to his crimes and the affairs and all that stuff that he's had. And that's pretty much it for Haruka's backstory. But like I said, Haruka having the Haruka having a crazy past, a crazy fucked up past, is what literally led to Haruka being the way that she is and the way she treats Hibari and all that stuff, the way she treated her as a doll and everything, and how how Hibari was just a little bit a little bit sad but confused in many ways. But you know, after Haruka defeated Hibari, like they made the whole thing where Hibari was Haruka was saying that if I defeat you, you're gonna you you belong to me. You're my doll or something. Not the whole type of guts and griffith thing where um griffith says i will decide where you die and all that stuff you belong to me that type of stuff not that one this is kind of different though you would be like she would be like more of haruka's puppet basically because you know haruka if you don't remember haruka has some crazy um experiments downstairs in her room and one of those crazy experiments is um is basically dogs one of those do like some of those dogs down there if you if you've actually watched the um the illustrational novel cutscenes and all that stuff for Samurai Kaga instead of skipping them, which are very long, um, Haruka is seen talking, like she's talking to her creations downstairs, and those are basically, I think, dogs or whichever, and she's, like I said, Haruka is a super sadist, so she'll literally just step on them and all that stuff, because these dogs were, these dogs I think Haruka created, because she, she also does different types of, I believe, medicine, or she's also like a scientist a little bit, and she does a lot of type of incomplete incomplete inventions and all that stuff because under that coat the, the coat that haruka has and that little robot that little robot is controlled i think that little robot is controlled by her ninja puppetry if i believe or it's just a robot she made i believe but that robot basically um has haruka's coat and all that stuff and gives her the coat when she needs it the robot itself is literally the robot itself you could say is literally the coat i believe but um under that coat is basically all of her inventions basically put into one little small thing i forgot what they're called but she keeps those in her coat and it's and it's the type of inventions that the little liquid stuff that she has in there she always uses you can see those in um i don't think you can use the coat anymore i think you can use the coat and um you can only use Haruka with the coat, I believe, in Senran Kagura, Shinobi Versus, and Burst Renewal, uh, Burst as well. But Estable Versus, you can't really see her with the coat anymore. But her robot does come out when you use one of her special moves and everything like that. But other than that, that's pretty much everything on Haruka. Um, she's a super sadist. She had a crazy past, and that's why Haruka was the way she was at the beginning. But she later on changed, you could say. She kept the same personality, but she later on changed and all that stuff after meeting Hibari and, you know, learning more about friendship and everything like that. I mean, when she was with Homura and them, she knew a lot about friendship and everything like that, but she wasn't able to, you know, cooperate with them on a little bit of friendship terms and everything. But facing off against, facing off against Hanzo, like Hanzo Academy, she learned to later on you know she learned to later on see these type of feelings and everything when she met Hibari and you know understand it Hibari a bit more and how how well mostly how cute and go lucky she can be but how much Hibari cared for Haruka and you know that's why the relationship between Hibari and Haruka is you know let's not forget Yagyu and all that stuff but Haruka you know these two understand each other a little bit and you could say that hot like that Hibari is basically the one that changed Haruka but other than that, that's pretty much it about Haruka. This backstory was at the request of um, request of a person who's new to Senran Kagura and is a part of um, is subscribed to the channel, and he wanted me to do Haruka's backstory. And honestly, I should have def I should have honestly done Haruka's backstory years like well, I should have honestly done Haruka's backstory like the first Senran the first Senran discussion I ever did. I should have honestly done Haruka's backstory. I don't know what was keeping me waiting and all that stuff, but. 
Um, I said the same thing for Hikage, but other than that, I'm glad to have covered it now. You guys know everything about Haruka now, and you guys know she had a crazy past. Some people would always ask, why is Haruka this way? Well, now you know. Her fucked up past with her obsessive mother, who was obsessed with dolls and all that stuff, and obsessed with her, treated her like a doll and everything like that, and didn't treat her as a human being. And then there's her father, who was basically, you know, who's basically a doctor, but also a cheater, um, doing affairs. I can see why this man loves, uh, loves patience, but now you pretty much know why, but... <clears throat> Like I said, with the ninja, with the with her puppetry, she later on forced her father to admit to his crimes and everything. And that's just pretty much it. Haruka later on, Haruka's current status right now, she is a renegade shinobi after the battle with Hanzo and all that stuff. Their current status is a renegade shinobi now. You know, facing off against Hanzo and everything, Heavy Joe being burned down and everything. And then later on, the current status is they are renegade shinobi now. So Haruka is no longer part of Heavy Joe along with Homura and the rest, they are now Homura's Crimson Squad, part of, you know, just being a renegade shinobi now. Now the new Heavy Joe are Miyabi in them, so other than that, that's Haruka's backstory. Um, thank you guys for watching, there will be more Senran Kagura discussions on the way, and feel free to request any backstories of certain characters. Um, no new Link, no new Link characters though, because I don't think new Link characters have backstories, only uh, Senran Kagura characters in the console in the console type of um, barrier. When I say console barrier, when I say console barrier, I mean the console games, either the console games only or from Senran Kagura, from the very first Senran Kagura game, Portrait, Portrait of Girls, or Burst, all the way to, all the way to, I believe, Estuo versus or Peach Beach Splash, but only the characters in the original franchise version, not those from New Link or New Way. I, I covered Fubuki for a reason because that was from the because she was also in the anime franchise as well, so I had a reason to cover her. But other than that, I will see you guys later. Bonkai to the motherfucking potential. Signing out.